another Screenfish one-on-one. I'm so glad to be here today with uh, John Dashbach, the director of Come Back Anytime, uh, the, uh, the new documentary. Thank you, John. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. I'm so glad that you could join us. Uh, Come Back Anytime is a, is a joyful film. Like, it is just, it's a wonderful piece. Um, how, is it that, how is it that you connected with, uh, with Masamoto? It's Masamoto, yes? Yeah, we call him Ueda-san, uh, Mr. Ueda. Um, uh, but Masamoto, yeah, uh, Ueda is uh, the owner of Ute, uh, which is a ramen shop in, in, in Tokyo that I encountered almost uh, nine years ago, I think now. Um, a friend, a uh, Japanese friend who was a regular there, uh, just called one time and said, Hey, we're gonna go camping with my ramen, my favorite local ramen master, and we're gonna go foraging for wild uh, mountain yams. Do you would you be interested in doing that? And I was like, of course. <laughs> what I don't know what that is, but yeah. <laughs> and so I went, and it was amazing. And and just sort of to be checked out. I think you know, I, I went to the restaurant first, and so that was actually the first time I. I, I ate there was was to talk about making plans for this weekend excursion, uh, which ultimately becomes a, a very important part of the film because it's an important part of the place and and an important part, I guess, of what drew me to it to such an extent that I wanted to make a movie about it because I, uh, you know, had done so I, I did over the years, I, I, I did several of those kinds of excursions or I went to uh, pizza parties, he would have pizza parties at, at the at his country garden. That you see in the film, uh, which we actually filmed, but but um, just couldn't fit it in, and mm-hmm. you know we kind of wanted to keep it, uh, you know, uh, maybe pizza is less interesting than ramen, you know, to <laughs> to to this audience if it's a ramen film. So, so we 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 tried to keep it focused on on that, and or or the foraging, you know, which is very interesting too. So, um, but but yeah, so after about uh, five years of, of of going there fairly regularly, I wouldn't call myself a regular, but but um, but having been there enough to to be familiar with it, we were there at the end of the year one year, and and it was just this amazing experience where it was before he was closing for the holidays, and it was just kind of a big holiday party. It was very festive, and I, and it just hit me. I was like, I want to capture this place. I want to I want to try to convey the the experience of of uh, of being here. Um, you know, I can't convey the taste of the soup, but I can try to do everything else. And so that's that's what it became. He was very, uh, you know, easygoing. Like some, sometimes people talk about access. You know, is is it's uh, such a key part of a documentary, which it is in many cases. But for us, I think we because we already knew him, it it it, it just naturally happened pretty easily when we asked him. He was like, "Oh, that sounds like fun. Sure." You know. Was uh, now you've spent a lot of time in Japan. You said you mentioned you were thinking of doing. Yeah, I mean, I live here, so oh, so wow. I had been, yeah, so I had been you know going there, you know, a couple of times. I wouldn't say now it's a couple times a month, but it was probably you know uh, every every few months because um, it's not right n- nearby, um, so it's a bit of a trip, but it's worth the trip now. <laughs> and we go a lot, also just to see him and check in with him and give him news about the movie. And, uh, but uh, yeah, no, I've, I've I've lived here for for quite some time now, and uh, I love it. You know, and I just had been wanting to thinking about different possible ways, and I could kind of try to convey part one of you know one aspect of my experience here and so that's kind of what this became is is me saying here this is something i experienced let me show it to you and that's all it is and this is how it felt uh and this is how it feels to be there um because that's you what's unique about it i think because uh, there there are many ramen shops you know, like this but 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 um on the surface but this this place is is unique in its own way and like so many places are um you know, I just thought this is worth capturing, and 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 you know, Ueda-san is also a very unique yeah. character. So, well, this is this is a horrible comparison. I admit that beforehand, but it was interesting <laughs> watching the film, and I thought this is almost it, it felt like that old sitcom Cheers growing up. Like, <laughs> it, it, there's this community. You're not the people. first. <laughs> yeah, no. You know, there's that one woman who comes in and said, "Oh, I I get uh, I get this drink." And it's waiting for me when I sit down. And I'm like, this is, there's, there's a sense <laughs> of community yeah. in this place that is simply beautiful. And yeah. 
Um, I, I, it, it, it definitely has that feeling. Uh, it definitely is. How, it just feels good to be there. I just literally, you know, have these moments where I'm like, this is just such a nice place to be. <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't want to leave, but you feel like, well, I, got, I should free up a seat for somebody else because there's not that many seats. Um, but uh, but it does sort of turn into a, a bit of a like a almost a bar at night. You know, I mean, people uh, you, there's a whole upstairs that's not really shown in the movie because usually equipment was up there or, or people who didn't want to be filmed <laughs> would, right. would go up there. But um, but yeah, so it's it's um, you know, we were reluctant to use that, make that comparison because it seemed to us, you know, because it's a classic right. show and and and. You know, it was like it would be a little, little presumptuous, maybe of us to, to, to use that in our marketing. But, but uh, a couple of people picked it up at Hot Docs. You know, a couple of people wrote about it, and they made that comparison to. We're like, okay, good. Now we can, we can use that because it is, yeah, it is. It's the place where everybody knows your name. Everybody yeah. knows your name. That's that's yeah. what it felt like watching it because yeah. it wasn't a restaurant you visit. It was a place you, a place you, you stay, a family you visit. Yeah, and it, it was so interesting. Oh, good. I mean, the other one, uh, are you familiar with Midnight Diner, uh, the Japanese show um, about a about this very, thing. very little opens at midnight uh, and, and it's sort of, you know, the, the nighttime customers of a of uh, of of this sort of party district. And uh, it's really popular here. And there's like a there's like these these sort of uh, remake versions of it in Korea. And I, there's one in Taiwan. And so so people kind of resonated with that too i think he also wears a similar uniform to the guy in that but uh but but i love that show so that was that was kind of i guess an inspiration as well yeah absolutely uh, one of the things i caught uh from the film that i thought was so interesting there's a high value of simple um i, I was just wondering if you could speak to that and why uh, you ate it you ate a son um has decided to keep things so 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 well simple so easy it's yeah, it's a good yeah it's a good uh, point it's, it's um i think that's just uh i think he my sense is that he got he, he found something that worked mm. and he was like i'm not gonna mess with it <laughs> you know like people <laughs> love it and that's all i want is i just want people to come here and love it and and want to keep coming back and so i think once he found that but he didn't even have all he had was the soy based kind of classic tokyo style ramen for for several years and then uh people said well how about a miso how about a you know a salt based one and so eventually sort of you know due to popular demand he, he started adding things and and uh, which is kind of discussed in the film and also adding alcohol he didn't serve alcohol at first he uh he, he doesn't drink so you know it just didn't occur to him. I, mean, I think, that, like, why should I? But then, I think he found the the value in that because it's, uh, you know, it, it it keeps people people coming and people. Some people come and they stop by, and they just have a drink and a snack. They don't even have ramen. They just come very briefly because they're going to go have dinner at home. But they just one guy said it. Uh, I don't think we that no, we didn't end up using it, but he's he said uh, it's like I have to just sort of shift gears, uh, which is is the same thing with cheers, right? You know, in a way. I mean, there's the regulars who are there all night, but then there's some people who just come in to sort of do that shift shift out of work mode and and into and before home, mm -hmm. just take a moment to sort of relax and 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 have a drink and and uh, and so a lot of people that's what they you know that's how a lot of the regulars that's that's what they do. Um, they don't always have, or sometimes he's out of noodles. You know, he just oh, it was busy today. <laughs> I don't have any more. <laughs> so. Well, it's, it's funny that you, you mentioned it, the, the salt. There's that one gentleman who who says that he, I think it's, I forget what it is, scallops or something is in, is in the. And oh, he, it's the he, scallions. Yeah. yeah scallions. Yeah. And he doesn't, right. and he doesn't like he those. Hates, so he, he hates says, onions. And he, and, he, and he won't ask for it because it, he, he said that there, you know, it just feels wrong to ask for it without the, the scallions. And, <laughs> <laughs> it was so interesting to me. I'm like, there's this entire it's like you don't want to mess with it and yeah. and uh, I, I and you mentioned that one you said he doesn't he there's somebody says if a place has one great dish people will care about it mm -hmm. and, and it's so fascinating in a time where we go to places and they all have to have cater to everybody right right yeah he's i mean he also i think he also just he makes what he wants to make like a lot of ramen places have um have, you can get fried rice as well you know uh, um and uh, he's like, oh, it's just, you know, it's, it's, 
you know, I like it, but it's, it's like, it's, it's a lot of work, <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't like making it. So, yeah. um, um, but uh, I mean, it's, it's more, more complicated than that, but I think, you know, he just feels like he wants to keep it focused on this one soup and he just makes the same thing every day and it's, and, but it's different every day too, you know, it, it, it bends on the ingredients and, and, uh, and, and just, it's all different throughout the day. It, it kind of changes as the soup boils down, it kind of, kind of gets more rich. And they talk about that in the film, which I think is, is fascinating too, that, that the life of the, the day is in the soup, you know, that, that it, it, it depends, you know, when you encounter it, how, how, how you're going to experience it, which is true with, with a lot of relevant places, but, but he doesn't try to control it obsessively. He just, he just knows what works and he's been doing it for 40 years and, and, and he knows that people like it. And so why mess with it, you know? Um, but the, the thing with the scallions was great because it's called, he doesn't call it salt, my salt ramen. He calls it my scallion ramen that happens to have a salt soup. So that's what this guy's point was like, I, I, you know, it's like ordering the burger without the burger, you know, like, yeah. like, like, like just, or whatever, you know, for him, it's yeah. like, that's, he's showcasing those onions and he make, takes great effort to, to prepare them in a certain way. And they, they're a little bit, he's got this like little spiciness that he adds to them and, and he chops them really carefully. And it's, it's like, he would be, you know, offending him to, to ask for just the soup. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, I know, I know we're running out of time, uh, John, but I, I just, I'm wondering to you, what is the power of food? Like, I mean, this is, there's so much, this is, this is a place that serves ramen with the occasional beer. We talk about the power of people wanting to be there. What is the power of, of food? I think it's, I think in this example, it's, it's how it, it's, it's, it unites the, the, the person who makes it and the person who consumes it. Uh, and they, they sort of um, ex have an exchange, uh, both in the moment, but also over time, you know, if they if they come back, of 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 sort of having that conversation where where the you know the the, the person makes the food, offers it, and the person who receives it gains something from it. But 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 the, but that gives the person who makes it something as well. He talks about that 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 like you know when somebody you know, a lot of people don't finish the it's pretty salty. So in in Japan, you know, it's not uncommon to leave a good amount of soup unfinished um uh for the sake of your you know yeah. your health but um but he, he said but yeah but when somebody finishes it all the way i'm just always so happy and so like he, he's he's getting joy from from giving them joy and uh and i think uh you know that's this is there are many different ways that that food does that and and that's partly what drew me to this place too is, is that people get real joy from from his food and from him and his presence and his his caring about them and his interest in them uh, so yeah that's that's what what i i loved about the place well i mean i think somebody says at some point in the film the more care you put in the better the results and i i that comes across like the, yeah. it, you just that's what i loved about the film you just sort of let the place be itself and it tells its own story and i, I just thought that was that was one oh, good one well, i'm glad to hear that that it came across because because that was that was the goal was just let's just you know what just try to capture it let it you know we we spent a year there that's you know um i mean not every day but but uh but we spent a lot of time there and that's that's i think paid off by just having people get used to us and being able to be kind of a fly on the wall uh and and just capture the the real place so i'm glad you I'm glad that resonated with you. Well, I, yeah, I appreciate that. It, like I said, there was something so it made it made me want to go, and uh, <laughs> good part good. of that. that well, I hope you can someday. <laughs> I would like to. Yeah, uh, he's, he's waiting. He's eager to receive. Uh, he's been getting people from Taiwan and from Australia, uh, not Australia, but um, but uh, Finland, no Norway. Some people have seen it in Israel in you know, various places, and they're they're dropping in now and saying, "Oh yeah, we came because we saw the movie." So yeah. that's he, he loves that. So oh, um, that's awesome. That's yeah. wonderful. John, I, I thank you. I thank you so much for the time. It's a, it's a wonderful Absolutely. Time. And I, I really appreciate the chance to chat with you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks. And, and I'm so glad you enjoyed the film. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime. And, uh, and I wish you the best. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks.